So let's look a little bit more closely at how Tech parses the files that you provide as input. Um, this is not a complete description of everything that goes on, but there are a couple of commonly made mistakes by Tech beginners and they are often based on not understanding how exactly the parser works. So having this uh, basic understanding of the input syntax will help you uh, avoid many of these mistakes. Um, the first thing is that uh, with one little exception, uh, Tech does not make any distinction between a space character and a line feed. So if you reformat a, a paragraph in your editor by redistributing how line feeds and space characters are used in a paragraph, that has actually no output, uh, no influence on the output, very similar to what you may be familiar with from other plain text document formats like HTML in the web. Um, multiple spaces are also treated like a single space. Um, so if you want to indent part of your document to show some hierarchical structure or so, the indents at the start of the line will be ignored because of that rule. The one exception where space character and line feeds are not identical is that uh, Tech recognizes empty lines and an empty line is treated as a paragraph separator. So the parser will just automatically insert a backslash par command to separate to start a new paragraph here. Then there are the commands or macros or variable names. These all start with a backslash to distinguish them from regular text. And there are two formats for macros. You can either have a, uh, a word, so a sequence of letters, no digits, no punctuation characters, just letters A to Z, uppercase or lowercase. And uh, this kind of macro automatically ends whenever it, uh, the parser encounters the first non-character, uh, non-letter non character in uh, when going through the line. So backslash par, backslash item, page three, for example, would be valid macro names. Page three with a digit three would not be a valid macro name. It would automatically start after the word, stop after the word page. Um, the second macro command format is a single non-letter character. So backslash plus, backslash, backslash, backslash digit three, all these are valid uh, macro names. And again, the rule for where, where the macro name ends is simply after the first non-letter character. So bad examples would be page 33, you can't have because the end here are non letters. And here we try to have two punctuation characters. Again, the macro ends after the first one. An additional rule here is that a space or a line feed character is ignored if they follow a macro uh, consisting of letters because space or line feeds are often used in order to terminate the macro name. So if you want to insert a macro that has some visible effect and you want to have a space afterwards visible, you have to use the special macro backslash space in order to explicitly insert a space. So there is, for example, a built-in macro backslash tech to output this stylized tech logo. And if you just write backslash tech space syntax, then uh, this space would not be present. And I had to add it here explicitly with a backslash space. In every language, there's also some uh, characters with special semantics, meta characters, which are part of the syntax. Uh, so you have to, you will get, you will trigger some function rather than just output the character if you use these in the middle of the text. These are the number sign, dollar sign, the percent, the ampersand, the tilde, underscore, circumflex, backslash, and the opening and closing uh, brace. Uh, 
Many of these, if you want to include them in normal text, uh, you just put a backslash in front. There is a single uh, symbol uh, macro of the same name that just outputs these. And they have various special meanings uh, that we will talk about soon. But for example, the percent sign starts a comment. So whenever uh, the parser encounters a percent, it will just discard all characters until the end of the line. Or the tilde character, for example, is a no break space. It looks exactly in the output like a space, but the line breaking, the paragraph reformatting algorithm will not uh, be able to replace this space with a line break. So for example, a no break space is commonly used between a number and a unit, or for example, between uh, the initials of a name and, and the surname, because these would be quite awkward places to uh, position a line break. Um, <clears throat> If you looked carefully among these macros, there are two of these characters here uh, missing. Uh, the backslash backslash actually uh, has a different uh, meaning in some modes. This is used as a line separator. And the um, <clears throat> there's also no uh, backslash tilde because we will soon see this is used in as a so-called combining character to put a tilde on, to, on top of the next character as a diacritical mark. Um, so in theory, you could use commands backslash text backslash and backslash text ASCII tilde in order to insert these in normal text. But in practice, this is almost never done. Um, <clears throat> if you try to do this, you're probably doing something wrong because there's a number of ASCII characters, backslash, underscore, tilde, graph, accent, curly braces, that aren't really typically used in normal text. They're only really used in computing related strings in identifier, source code, path names, URLs, and the like. And that sort of computing related strings in typography is typically uh, indicated by um, switching to a fixed width typewriter uh, like font. And there exists uh, macros in tech to insert uh, computing related strings in the middle of a text. Uh, there is the verbatim environment or there's a macro backslash verb, then an arbitrary character here, for example, a plus, then an arbitrary string that does not contain the start character, and then a repetition of that start character. So you can choose what end character you want to have in that string. And they will just typeset all the ASCII characters between these start and stop characters in a typewriter font and all these uh, meta character semantics will be disabled. So if you want to quote a piece of uh, source code in the middle of a paragraph, you use backslash verb. And if you want to quote a piece of uh, source code uh, that's multiple line longs, you use the verbatim environment. There's also a backslash URL command uh, that you can use to insert URLs in text, but you have to include either the URL or the hyperref package in order to uh, get access to this. This is not present by default. Um, the curly braces in uh, Tech serve two purposes. The first of these is they create a lexical scope. So you can think of the opening curly brace as saving the current state of the typesetting engine on a stack, and then the closing curly brace to uh, restore the that saved uh, state. So uh, whenever you make some change, for example, you uh, switch to a different font or you assign a value to a variable. If you do this inside a uh, open close curly brace group, then the effect will only last until the end of this group. So simple demonstration, there's a command backslash boldface series that switches the current font to the boldface, the fat version of uh, that um, font type that you're currently using. And you can see it 
uh, switches to boldface here and it automatically stops using boldface at the curly brace. The Second use is in the context of a macro. A macro can uh, receive an argument and if you just write the macro name and this is a macro that receives for example one argument and you don't use curly braces then it will simply take the next single character as the argument. If you want to hand over more than one character as an argument you have to group these characters together with curly braces. So for example here the command textbf doesn't change the state in the uh, lexical scope in which it is called. Instead it's a function that typesets the argument that you provide to it in a boldface font and here it receives just a single letter and here it receives an entire word. <clears throat> in addition uh, LaTeX has an extended uh, macro mechanism that also understands optional arguments and these optional arguments can then be enclosed in or have to be enclosed in square brackets. So LaTeX adds a makebox command which puts a, the text that you uh, supply to it into what's called a horizontal box. That's a tech internal data structure of something that has been readily formatted that will not be line broken any further. The, the arrangement of all the characters inside the box have been fixed and then you hand it over to uh, whatever looks after the context in, in which this box appears. And you can also optionally specify that the box should have a width here 80 millimeters and you can specify that this text should be if it's shorter than 80 millimeters then it should be centered inside this box. But these are optional arguments and therefore they appear in square brackets. Since I mentioned a couple of uh, standard macros for switching between different font types I've provided here an entire list just to give you an overview of what type of font styles are available as part of the computer modern font family which is sort of the default font family that Knuth designed together with Tech and that is quite commonly used. Um, <clears throat> so you have uh, Roman fonts with uh, serifs, um, either medium bold, a sans serif font family has a more uniform stroke width and does not have the serifs, the little widening at the end of vertical strokes. Um, we have a typewriter family that looks like a typewriter. Uh, <clears throat> in addition to the default normal upright shape, there is also a slanted shape where the characters are just sheared to the side. There's also an italic shape where the characters are not only slanted but the serifs are replaced by little uh, tails to the side and some characters like the A actually have a slightly different shape and some corners are rounded. There's a caps and small caps fonts that's sometimes used for example to highlight the, the name of a person um, where all characters are in uppercase and if you in if you type a lowercase letter that's just shown as a smaller uppercase letter. And these are the commands that switch the state until the end of the group and there are corresponding uh, commands that receive some text and they typeset the text in the corresponding font. Um, curiously you don't normally specify the font size directly in points because there are global parameters where you can say for this particular document class this is a 10 point, 11 point, 12 point uh, style document and then these uh, document classes define a set of macros for relative font sizes. You have a normal size, a small size, a footnote size down to tiny. And you have different versions of large and huge. You can see here also that the macro names are uh, case variant so you can make something larger by adding more uh, uppercase letters to the way the macro is named. Um, <clears throat> a warning in practice you're not meant to use most of these uh, 
macros, certainly not in normal text. There are other macros available, um, such as section macros or emphasis macros to give a, an abs a more abstract specification of how you want to structure your text and the uh, style sheets that are used, the class definitions uh, use these internally. But sometimes you want to define particular scientific notation where, for example, a variable or some other scientific notation has to be in italics and then these can be useful. 